so we were just talking about the uh, question of programming the, uh, the, the city to city section. I mean, city to city being one, as we said, of the sort of discreetly demarcated programs, another one being. Um, Another one being wavelengths. I know, Jason, you wrote in your column for Grid this year about wavelengths and midnight madness, which an you art forum, too. an art forum, art forum magazine, um, about uh, you know the ways that those kind of are their own mini curated festivals in and of themselves within larger things. What did you think of the crop of of, of, of wavelengths film this year, since you got to see most of it in order to write about it? No, I, was re I mean, I'm really pleased. I mean, there's certainly you know kind of uh, a, a shift going on. Um, just sort of with the, the mediums at work in wavelengths. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, there was a real good, great abundance of 60 millimeter works that directly commented on how hard it is to process 60 millimeter film. Uh, one, uh, Joshua Bennett's uh, American Color was sort of this kind of abstracted sort of road movie, which sort of kind of follows the last few uh, packs of, of 60 millimeter film to the, where it was being, uh, last place it was being processed in the States. Uh, also, the um, very good new Tacit Dean film, which made its premiere, or I guess maybe it was a North American premiere. Yeah, but that the gallery in London. Yeah, I think that's the first time in, on the continent, but uh, her uh, sort of uh, final portrait of Cy Twombly before he passed, um, Edwin Parker was the name of that film, which was Tom's uh, real name. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think a really, again, a really strong assortment of films. Uh, another really great new uh, Nathaniel Dorsky. Um, called the return and uh, the Pitcher Festival and the Pitcher uh, which you know, sixty seconds worth of you know uh, of Joe is going to carry for which most. Should not feature a filmmaker locked in a room. No, <laughs> and even less of Ryan Martin. Got, he got less than a minute. He got yes. less than a minute. Yes. And, uh, and then on the longer end, obviously the James Benning film, which I think Bob wanted. Yeah, to. twenty cigarettes. Yeah, uh, and twenty cigarettes um, uh, is. Uh, uh, in a sense, a companion film in some ways to RR, um, in the sense that the object um, in the frame, the duration time that the object represents, in RR's case, it's a train passing by the camera, the fixed camera. In the case of 20 cigarettes, it's the length of time that an individual cigarette smoker, uh, sometimes virgin cigarette smokers, uh, take to smoke their ciggy from one end to the other. Um, and uh, it's a film about, really fundamentally about faces. It's a portraiture film, yeah. really. Yeah, and, um, and the almost invisible um, shifts that happen in a face while they're faces is doing a routine ritual kind of action like that. Well, faces is something that was actually on our agenda, which wasn't a question, but an observation that Mark and I uh, were talking about well, together. Well, I, I did want to oh, yeah, yeah. mention uh, on the subject of white blanks, the, uh, the Ben Rivers film Sack Barrow, and also Ben has an installation too in the festival this year uh, for Slow Action, which is a film he premiered earlier. And a, and a very good film, which is not in this festival, which hopefully will come to Toronto soon, called Two Years at Sea, which just won a Critics Prize in Venice as well. Right. And and I want, yeah, I want to add in on slow action because uh, Torontonians are going to be able to see slow action after TIFF is over because it's in a gallery space, the name of which somebody can maybe cite right at this moment. TPW? Uh, TPW? We yep. Uh, west on... Uh, I so think it's on Ossington. Right? It's off of Queen yeah. West yeah. and uh, yeah. it'll be there through early October and uh, for me it's my favorite film of the year, mm. um, to date. We have a few months left in the year, but one more Ben Rivers film of the year. Uh, one it's more better. Ben Rivers film. Uh, slow action is extraordinary. It's better than, it's better than Wuthering Heights, Bob. Um, <laughs> the uh, slow action is one of those. You didn't ask that question. You didn't ask that question. <laughs> slow action is one of those films where, at the end of it, you go, "How in the world was this film made, and what planet was it made on?" And that's this that's a rare. Um, the loneliest planet. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Um, what I was what I was saying earlier, we were talking about faces yeah. and the portraiture. Mark and I observed during our uh, screening together of Mike Dowse's excellent goon, which I hope will now come up in this section of the podcast. That one of the common denominators, one of the uh, common denominators to. Uh, to, to some of the better films here is that uh, people repeatedly punched in the face. Mm -hmm. So I think all of us have had enough experience with these films. We can each cite, uh, you know, the face, our, our, our favorite face punching film of TIFF because there's like eight or nine, a very high volume. Is that your transition from James Benning to Goon? You said Adam? faces. Well, James yeah. Benning also, as I found out here, directed a uh, version of Cassavetes' Faces ah. recently, just uh, with close-ups of people's faces, uh, reciting the dialogue from the film, uh, which 
perhaps we'll be in TIFF next year. Perhaps. I don't know. But nobody gets punched in the face, I don't think. Okay, so what's your punched in the face movie? We'll move down the line. I'll go last. Let's see what's left. John? Oh, uh, <laughs> I like Robert Forster in Descendants just cranking that kid, which they kind of give away in the trailer. Um, but when it does happen, when Robert Forster storms on the screen in that movie in his sandals and ankle high beige socks, uh, you just know he's cruising to bruise that kid. Did you think um, that there were any heroes in The Descendants? Uh, <laughs> what an odd question. Uh, they real human beings. <laughs> yeah, they were real heroes. Uh, I think the real hero of the Descendants is Alexander Payne for digging himself out of his pith and snark and uh, into schmaltz, uh, which was, I don't know, pleasant. From snark into schmaltz, Mark, yeah. face punching. Yeah, well, before Goon, which we saw the other night, I, I also saw Mary cut immediately before Goon. And the film cut involves a guy being punched in the face for two hours and 20 minutes. It's kind of the Netflix ultra of face punching movies, uh, and of cinephilia <laughs> movies, right? And of uh, cinephilia movies. Yes, the, the 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 guy who's being punched in the face is a big cinephile uh, who projects films on his on his balcony, open air, to an uh, audience in Tokyo. It's a Japanese film directed by an uh, Iranian who now lives in the U.S., Amir Nadari. <laughs> and uh, the uh, the the climax of the film is he needs to make a, a large amount of yen to pay back his brother's debt. So in the boxing gym slash yakuza hall slash bar bathroom, he uh, he gets people to pay him to be punched in the face, and the body too, to be fair. But I think it's more if you punch him in the face. And as he's uh, as he's going through this process, he remembers his uh, favorite films and screenings that he's done before. And uh, counts down like a personal. And counts down his cannon. personal 100 uh, films in no particular order, except for the top 10. And. Uh, I don't know. I, I, if there's still a screening, I think they added one because there were some technical problems uh, yesterday. It actually might be tonight, so I don't know if people can make it, but it's not a film for everybody. It's a controversial film, maybe not as much as Wuthering Heights, yes, but uh, it's one I think that you know makes a lot of sense to me in the context of this film festival, and I'll right. leave it at that. Bob, a quick face punch? Um, the, uh, the, the most violent film in the festival has an immense amount of face punching, but also punching on every possible corner of the human body, which is the amazing The Raid. Oh, you took my pick. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> well, well, okay. Uh, opening night of Midnight Madness, uh, most uh, spectacular fight movie I've ever seen. And it was so, remind you of the so violent. Arthur Freed Jr.? Well, it was so violent and so stark that even the, you know, uh, veteran Midnight Madness guy audience was just like, they were like, you know, reacting like, like little girls to this uh, uh, amazing spectacle of a lot of punches in the face and like so visceral that you were verbally going, Ooh, ah, you know, during the, uh, during the screening. Um, and runner up to that is... You can't get two, that's not No, 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 I gotta do a runner up. Runner up, because there's just so... Jason's other so yeah. No, I won't, I don't think so. <laughs> because there's so many. There's so many punches in the face in this festival is Matthew McConaughey punching well, Gina Gershon in the face in Kill Show. You took my film. Yeah, well, <laughs> Jason. Like, well, uh, you can add to it. Well, okay, well, uh, I'll just go with Goon then. Oh. Yeah. Well, no, you can do the rest of Killer Joe. It's, uh, he's only gonna use half of that. Goon, uh, but Goon, I mean, I think that that's... We uh, need to talk about Goon. We're going to talk about Goon. We need to talk about Goon. On, on Goon, because it seems to be emerging as the sort of head and shoulders above the rest of the Canadian pack in terms of just a really smart, Straight very satisfying, head. very funny, very violent hockey movie. And that's something that, you know, Canadians especially lust for is like, because, you know, I think that finally there's a movie that is at least, you know, it is quite a bit better than Slapshot. I mean, of course, we, we treasure Slapshot in a particular right. way, but this is Slapshot. actually not, not, not a Canadian film. It's not even a Canadian yeah. film. It's so yeah. superior to Alex Gibney's Last Gladiators oh, on, the, on the same topic. To say nothing of last year's score debacle. Oh, yes. Yeah, we or this year's <laughs> <laughs> breakaway <laughs> debacle. I'm not sure it's actually catching the Don't debacle or not, but... But uh, but yeah, I mean, Goon is just it is it just works so well as sort of a satire of just the of, of, of hockey violence and sort of bloodlust in the sport, but also just sort of this really very sincere celebration of the sort of warrior code that is I think a, a, a big part of it for for so many fans and and yet you know and 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 Sean William Scott just totally sells it as as as, as Doug the Thug Glant. He's so dumb. Uh, he's so dumb yeah. and he's so sweet and it just it it, it the, the because of him the movie just takes on the exact kind of tone it needs and. 
uh, and it might even appear in America. I mean, I think it'll. It is. It's it yeah. bought by, uh, by, Ameri- by Magnet. It's uh, really and, thing. and to wind up face punching, there's another film I wanted to mention, but I'll talk about it in a different context. We should follow up on Killer Joe, so we mm-hmm. don't forget this William Friedkin's very entertaining uh, film adaptation of a Tracy Let's Play. It's a really nice collaboration between them again after Bug. I didn't think the film quite opened up into the larger culture the way that Bug did, which I thought was really about something. I thought this one was a little theatrical and self-contained but it's so entertaining it's so uh, you disagree okay. you it's, it's 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 so entertaining it's such a pungent movie matthew mcconaughey's grown into such a sly self-aware cartoon movie star our in this. most underrated actor mark says our most underrated actor i think he's uh, I think he's terrific in this movie, and I think it's really fun to see what happens when William Friedkin is trying, because the direction, especially, I'd say, the first sequence, the dark and stormy night, with the unforgettable entrance of Gina Gershon, uh, the lower <laughs> half of Gina Gershon, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's it's the best opening of any film I saw at, uh, at the festival this year, and in the top three or four for face punching uh, so far. <laughs>